everyone it's Clemmie back again to share with you my process for doing um, the curved spines um, I just started doing these spines and I'm having so much fun with them you guys learning all the new techniques and just different ways of achieving um, the look that I'm going for um, but first things first um, in one of the uh, previous videos uh, on the straight spine or the flat spine I was um, <laughs> I was ranting about the um, Epson Eco Tank, and I found this out, you guys. If you use parchment paper, you get stunning prints. And I'm going to show you what I have here. Um, stunning. Oh, can you guys tell how beautiful that is? And these are um, images from lace boutique one i'll um, leave a link in the description box below but i want to show you guys um not only how beautiful um these images are she's done a lovely job but that even if you use your eco tank you can achieve um something that looks like this they're really really nice and it's just parchment paper now i have had this pack um for probably over a year and you can tell that I still have quite a bit left this is um, what it's called get that box in there and um, I have used it so sparingly in my journals you guys because it is a specialty paper there are 500 in a pack and I probably still have half that left because I hardly use this paper now that I know that um, it can make my prints look like this I probably will go through this um, other box really fast so that is why I bought a second uh, pack of that um, parchment paper but this is just parchment paper and I wish I had um, an image for you to um, compare that to but you guys just trust me I'm telling you this is almost the quality or probably at least the quality of my HP printer and gorgeous just gorgeous so anyway I'm gonna put that to the side and I'm going to tell you guys about another thing once I get this situated. So I purchased the um, board binding that I told you guys. Um, I was waiting to come in so I didn't have to cut continuous pieces. I mean, piece after piece. So it came in and it comes in um, 15 by 20. So me of course i couldn't find the little cheap um box cutter and i was determined to try and uh, cut this this morning so i used my scissors and i chopped it up you guys but that's not why i'm showing this well it came and this stuff is solid but i noticed that it came warped if you can tell let's do like that It's warped. I don't know if you guys want to see if I could show you if you put it side by side. How? Well, anyway, you're going to have to take my word for it. But this came warped. Now, it is solid. It's almost like cement. But I noticed the last um, couple of journals I've done, I used three medium weight chipboard to um, attain the thickness that I needed. Well... I realized that the thickness is probably only two of these put together so I will go back to just using the two but I do like the three though but it's about <laughs> it's about goodness I'm trying to show you it's about the same width as two of your heavyweight chipboards that's just um, reference for you. So we're gonna put that to the side. Okay, so the first thing is I've already gotten started. Um, the next thing, your curved spine. Now, two ways, Terry, um, made this Templar mold <laughs> for me. And all it is is two um, large coffee cans put together and she glued or she um, covered it with um, some duct tape. 
okay that's all this one is and it's two large coffee cans okay I um, was having issues with where they connected um, having a ridge in the um, the spine but all you would have to do to fix that is go around it with more um, duct tape to where it evened out you know kind of go you know to where it evened out so I went to um, a mail place it's not it wasn't UPS they sent me over to um, um, he owns his own business it's called mail and more and he was kind enough to let me have one of these mailers for free so I want to show you the difference because as you can see there's a big difference in the spine that you get from that put these down so this is the one with the um, circular mailer and this one is from the coffee can so you can see the difference in the curve I guess you can there you go you see the difference in the curve and I like them both and on the journals the pink one is made with the coffee can and I like that little slight curve and then the blue one or the navy one is made with the circular mailer and the pink one is a three inch spine so it's larger okay so after you have cut your um your chipboard out and this is um nine by two and a half okay because my journals are nine by six that i've been cutting for um these uh covers i like the way that the jute looked so i did the jute again and i have cut pre-cut some pieces out now um you guys check the comments below because um a couple of the ladies were very kind and generous. Hi, Dolores. <laughs> Hi, Sheila. They were very generous in um, helping me. And if you guys um, have any um, tips or something that I missed or I could do a little bit better, go ahead and put that in the, um, the comment area because um, I'm the type of person that um, if I'm watching a video and a person doesn't correctly ask, I mean, answer something or they just don't even answer it. I search in the comments because I know that people sometimes, you know, offer suggestions. So leave your tips and um, suggestions below. And other guys, you go ahead and check um, below and you'll find out some um, very helpful information. So we're going to move on. I have already cut some jute string out and they're all flat at this point. I just have um, three on this side two in the middle and three lined up together on that side as well so i want a piece to hang above i'm sorry i'm out of uh, frame i want a piece to hang out a little bit so i'm going to add a piece to the top um or to the one closest to the edge on each side and then i'm going to also add another piece of jute string on top of each of these that's in the center and i'm using Fabri-Tac. I'm just going to use Fabri-Tac to do that. So one of the ladies suggested that um, the old books, what they did was they went completely around the spine so that it was even because of um, the ropes that held it or some you guys have got to check the comments. So I hope that this is what you're talking about because in my other journals, I don't go all the way to that edge. I stop around on that line right there so I'm gonna try it this way and hopefully that that is what she's talking about and um, see how that turns out I'm sure it's probably going to make um, wrapping it a little bit more difficult but we'll see won't we we shall see and I'm gonna go ahead and do these try and go really fast And I'm just putting glue on the top of it. And this jute string, you know it's rope, guys. Um, it comes up in a couple of pieces. I don't worry about that. I glue it down, but I don't worry about it because it's not, it's going to get um, held down anyway. 
So I'm just gonna layer that on top of that one and repeat. And to attain my middle piece, I did try to um, measure to get it as even as possible. But I've been just eyeballing this stuff. And the Fabri-Tac is doing what it does. And I can't remember what lady, but she suggested um, another glue that's a little bit uh, uh, better than the Fabri-Tac with all the glue glo globs that you get. So now I've got to clean all of this off. And this is some kind of like glitter, cosmic glue or something like that. So I'm just lining everything up, making sure that it's placed where I want it to be placed. And I'm going to set this to the side and I'm going to show you um, how you get the raised motifs. If that's not right, someone uh, tell me what you call this, but just um, the raised letters and this. The way that I did this one is I took some texture paste and a stencil. And this is my stencil. Okay. And I'm gonna show you doing that. But I know that you can also, and if I, the little filigrees that I just bought, the little wood filigrees that I just bought, um, I'm gonna try a journal um, doing that, and I think that'll be a lot less messy. But you just glue, just say take, say if I had the little um, wood filigree, you know, the little squirrely thing. Um, I would just glue it down, but this is too large. You're just gonna glue that on there, and then when you mold your um, fabric around, you know, you already have this and it's pretty thick so you get a nice elevation um, on there. I may try and do that another time and just show you guys maybe on um, Facebook or something. So, I also, there's another um, little flourish. Um, that would be nice too, but I would clean that off. You wouldn't even have to clean it off. And another idea that I had, um, if you cut out um, your um, templates and you had enough of them to where you stack them up to where they got a little bit of thickness to them, you can also use that instead of just purchasing the wood pieces. So that was an idea as well. Now, I don't know about using... See, I don't... Just bear with me. Hold on. Well, okay, say you wanted to take one of your metal pieces. I haven't tried this, but would this work? Because all you would need to do is then clean your metal piece off. You could just use this as a little stencil and then achieve the same thing as you would using your stencil. I'm going to move these out of the way. Just a couple of ideas to try. get all the wood from that jute. Where do they make jute out of? Because it's very interesting. It's like little wood pieces almost. So I'm going to go with this rose again because I love roses. And I believe I picked these up it says Ranger, so that's not Walmart. Probably either Hobby Lobby or Tuesday morning. But I know they should have something like this in Walmart. And you guys are going to have to excuse the little boo-boo I have on my um, hand. My little puppies were fighting, and I interrupted them, and one bit me. And I just want to leave that open to air for um, a few hours. But anyway, we're going to get this so I just take and if I don't have a palette with me I just use um, the lid of my Mod Pod you can tell it's all cruddy I'm just gonna put a little bit on there 
and I put quite a lot. And I'm gonna see where I wanna place that rose, where I wanna place it and how I wanna place it. So if I just wanna do one in the center, I would place it right there. And I'm not the best at this, but I think, I think I wanna go there. Make sure that I'm in frame so you can see. And I'm just gonna take some of this molding paste or this texture paste and hold that down and then scrape over and I like to lay it on thick because um, I like a higher elevation so you get some definition when you're laying um, when you're laying your fabric over closer to me now you don't want this molding paste to dry on you so you need to um, clean it off of your stencil as soon as you can or ASAP probably I try not to leave it on there too long. And because, like I said, I like a higher elevation. And I know you're I'm sure you're not supposed to do this. You're supposed to scrape this off. But like I said, I've tried to do that before and then go and realign it and add more on top of it after it dried. But that didn't work too well. So I try and go in and just kind of get a little thick layer, an even thick layer all the way across. And for we're gonna go ahead and pull this up but I really would um, usually do another layer so then you're just gonna lift that up and there you have um, your raised area let me take a little time and clean um, this off you guys so just hold on Please feel free to fast forward. And I'm looking at the angle and I am going to go ahead and buy, um, I don't know what you call it, but I'm just going to say like the arm thingy that um, holds your phone where where um, it looks like it's looking over the top of you. That's going to be a lot better in my opinion than um, this tripod. It's going to be a lot better set up for me anyways. Okay, hold on, you guys. This is being stubborn. A little more water. Sorry. But this is one of my favorite stencils. I can't let it go down like this. It's making me all cruddy. Okay, whatever. I'll just be buying another one, apparently. Okay, you guys. I hope you guys appreciate this. I'm losing one of my favorite stencils. Probably not. I got a little bit off, or most of it off. I'll buy another one anyways, just in case something happens to that one. It was probably only a couple of bucks. Anywho. Um, so, clean this off as well now. 
when I do it this way, um, using the uh, texture paste, I like to let this sit overnight because it needs to um, harden. You can't try and let it um, harden for an hour or so because when you go to put your um, cover on, that's going to smush or smash your um, motif. And I guess I must be saying that right because no one's corrected me on that yet. Get this stuff, set it back in there. We'll move on to the next one. So we're going to set this one to the side and let it um, dry. So now we have our pieces. These are just extra cuts. So if I take six pieces of hard, um, of heavyweight chipboard, I can get three journals because you, I cut my length first. I get my nine and then I cut the six and the six is 12 by 12. So that cuts it in half. And then what I'm left with is, um, and I just cut a little piece off of it and this will be my spine. I'll double those up and get my spine from those. Because I'm not really all that impressed with the um, the board binding. Maybe I just need to look at it a little bit differently. Okay, so these are the three pieces that we're going uh, we're going to use. Okay, that's what we're working with. So this is kind of an experiment because I don't know what those sides are going to um, look like. So we're going to put this thing together. We're gonna use um, this color fabric, one that I uh, made with the acrylic paint. Turn it this way. And I'm gonna check to make sure that I am in frame. Okay, so what um, one of the ladies also told me was and I had had that idea anyway when I worked with, uh, while I was working with um, the last spine. I'm just going to do a little piece at a time so that way you don't have to worry about, um, which I haven't had a problem with it, but it's going to be easier if you just do a little bit of glue at a time and then move to the next, um, next section. And I don't know how Onyx got in the house. Okay, so I'm trying to find my other brush. You guys, I really do have a lot of brushes. But I don't want to use certain ones. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna worry about it. Okay, so we're just gonna um do a little section at a at a time. And I'm gonna start at the bottom. Just gonna spread that on. And as I get to that jute, I'm gonna make sure that um it's got enough coverage on it because you see all the holes and stuff there. So I'm going to lay that down and I know I have enough room, so I'm not even going to have to, but to show you guys, see, I have way more than enough room. So I'm going to lay that there and I'm going to go ahead and flip it. And I see now that, um, and I'm going to take it off. I think I am going to go ahead and glue the whole thing. I think that's going to be easier for me.
you guys know, I encourage you to fast forward at this point. Because um, editing has not been in my favor. Just make sure that I've got good coverage over everything. And I know I'm kind of slopping it on. Just make sure you get in those creases right there. So I hope that this um, turns out right. I hope that that's what you were talking about, going all the way to the edge of that. But I guess we're going to find out, aren't we? Okay, see, now I'm slopping that on really good. And that is slopping because it's getting kind of sloppy. I don't like to be all sloppy like that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and lay this sucker over. Okay. Cool. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start molding it. Just start out like that. And I don't care if the glue is on this thing. You guys know that um, I will be... It's just temporary, it's a temporary thing. So, I also got a lovely um, information, some lovely information. You know how we see all the ladies with the uh, background covers like that? And this one I got at Hobby Lobby, um, but um, one of the ladies kindly um, let me know that you can get these from uh, Amazon. And they're called uh, vinyl covers, I think. Vinyl table covers or something like that. So I'm just molding the um, fabric to the spine, you guys. Making sure to define these pieces. And... And I didn't hit this with Krylon. I have, as I said in the last, one of the last videos, I have um, the Krylon uh, Matte Clear Sealer. And you won't, you don't have to worry about the uh, glue seeping through. And one of the ladies also said, like Krylon, another product of Krylon, I believe, will help with that. Hey, mama's almost done, I hope. So I'm just molding that, you guys. And then I have to go in and straighten it out, especially in the sides there where that's coming over. Because I was thinking if that did work out, you could um, then take that jute string and bring it over into your, um, your uh, journal cover, like it would be carried on, like that line would be carried on. And if I'm out of angle, I'm just going in more to define that more. Tell Alexis, um, Onyx is in the house. Oh, I think she knows that. She, she, she. It does. She does? Yeah. She does, not her. She does. She does. Yes. Okay. I'm almost not liking this design as much as the last one. 
Is it just me or am I tripping? I would not be surprised. So it seems I have quite a bit of time to work with this um, PVA. I do like that. Just going to go in now and define everything. glue myself while I'm at it. So I wanted to do one straight video, but I don't know, do I need to have, um, take time and let this set? Let me see. Where's my time? Okay, I think we're at 30 minutes. Uh, Let's see. I think we're going to take a break here. We're going to let this dry a little bit, and I'll come back and finish putting this together for you guys.